Introducing Kolb and the Stenophora. As you can see, they currently live near a tropical coast in the coral reef. But this isn't their only home. Colvin and their family can live in nearly any aquatic environment, so their house moves quite frequently. Right now, Colvin is getting ready for school. <sighs> Colvin looks in the mirror. Oh man, I look ugly today. Ugh, what should I wear? Wait a minute, what am I talking about? I'm a Nemiasis lady. I don't wear clothes. Honey, come downstairs. It's time for school. Coming! Heading off to school, Colvin goes to class. Hello, class. Welcome to LMU. My name is Dr. Kuzmenko, and I'm subbing for Dr. Weaver. And uh, welcome to Bio 111. Today in lab, we will be learning about phylogenetic trees and the origins of us, Tenophora. So, uh, please be sure to take out your handout for week 13 and let us get started. Before we start, take a look around class. Do you notice any physical similarities between you and your fellow classmates? Right off the bat, it's somewhat obvious that we, Tenophora, all have a mouth, anal pores, and cilia. Hmm, I just admired those this morning. But it goes deeper than that. You see, Physical characteristics are not only points we can examine. In fact, we can analyze our whole phylogeny using mRNA sequences to genetically determine who we are most similar to as opposed to guessing based on observations. Now, class, I posted an assignment on Brightspace to do before lunch today. You'll have to show me a picture of your phylogenetic trees based on mesquite data. Corbin, Cameron, you two can show me yours first. Wow, very good. Remember to show me your phylogenetic trees before you leave. Thank goodness it's finally lunchtime. I'm starving. Me too. Corbin and Cameron swim off, the cilia propelling them through the water. Cameron, look, I see some plankton over there. I'm going to use my sticky coloblasts on my tentacles to catch and eat them. Uh. Not to be rude, but how do you eat? I don't see any tentacles on you. Don't worry. Tenophores ask me this all the time. You see, you're part of the class Tenticulata. Most of Tenophores are like you and have two tentacles. I'm a species of Tenophore from the class Nuda. I've got a large stomadium and a wide mouth that I use just to swallow food. Oh, cool. Colvin and Cameron swim up to the surface, about to snack on some plankton, when suddenly a huge whale swims up and gobbles up all of the plankton. Oh no, what are we gonna do? I'm starving. Me too. In fact, if I don't get a snack soon, I won't be able to control myself. Um, what does that mean? Corbin shrieks in surprise as Cameron takes a huge bite of Corbin. What the? Oh, relax. You'll be fine. Comb jellies have great regenerative capabilities. You are the worst friend ever. I'm going to go find new friends. Whatever. I'm not jellious. You're killing me, Smalls. After lunch, Corbin sullenly returns home, ready to forget the events of the day. Comment était ta journée? Horrible. Friends with Cameron anymore. Ah, that's too bad. Why don't we change the subject? What did you learn in school today? Well, we learned about our evolutionary history and phylogenetic trees and all that. It was cool, but well, it made me wonder something. Vous pouvez nous demander n'importe quoi. When we were going over phylogenetic trees, Dr. Kuzmenko talked about traits that we all have at different stages of our lives. Any cool traits about when we're babies? Um, well, I do know that we're likely deuterostomes. Is that cool enough? What's a deuterostome? It means that our mouths developed second when our digestive system was forming. If our mouths developed second, then what developed first? Our anal pores. Ew! 
I didn't know that. Well, you asked. Uh, yeah. Mom, Dad, where do babies come from? Mm -hmm. Finally! I've been preparing this for months. I mean, um... Eh bien, chérie, quand deux ténophores s'aiment beaucoup, ils libèrent des œufs et du sperme dans l'eau où la fécondation a lieu. Then what? Ensuite, l'œuf fécondé se transforme en larve sidipite puis en adulte en deux mois à trois ans au maximum. Yeah, yeah. Some of the other ténophores at school only have one parent. Why is that? Satanophores are like hermaphrodites and can reproduce asexually by putting... Alem, Corbin, vous avez l'air affamé l'heure du dîner. Nous pourrons en discuter plus tard. Corbin's family go to find some dinner when suddenly Hans descends into the water, scooping them all up into a plastic bag. These stanophores are going to go great for my research on how mucus can bind to microplastics, possibly helping water treatment facilities combat the world's plastic problems. Whoa! This looks like this looks like this one's injured. I'll get to study the regenerative capabilities of Nemios's Lavier too. Yes! This must be my lucky day. Oh no! Corbin was caught. Stick around to find out what happens in the next episode. The end.